Hello, and welcome to another episode of Heidi Sports Basketball. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back, everyone. You got Kilroy, you got Tommy, you got Mongo, you got Kevin. We're here to continue back on track for the Southwest. We're on to Southwest, y'all. 2023-2024 season previews. Uh, We have uh, Tommy's division. You can tell how happy he is. He's smiling. He's got his spurs on. I also have spurs on. He 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 sent me this, and this was his hat. He gave me this. I've graciously uh, given him my Kawhi jersey, Kawhi jersey so I know. Yeah, and it fits it. really comfortably. Uh, so, hey, uh, kudos or something like that. Uh, Mongo Yeehaw. decided not to wear his spurs outfit. I'm rocking a golf polo because I would literally rather be golfing, a sport which I don't know how to play. Instead of talking about this division. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. We're contractually obligated to discuss this division. Yeah, this is a I'm just here so I don't get fined moment for me. <laughs> I mean, honestly, we don't have to talk about this. We can go talk about something else. You want to continue the, right. the, the stuff? You guys leave. I'll talk about Jimmy Lillard trade. <laughs> it's we'll the Tommy hour, baby. <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> so, spoiler alert, Tommy, you're still not going to be happy this year. I know. I know. <laughs> Spoiler alert, he knows. <laughs> but you're doing a great job of matching your shades to your jersey nowadays. That's uh, that's solid work right there. It certainly is. Uh, the rest of us have some work to do. I, I don't have one. Step one, buy shades. Step two, spray paint them, I guess. My glasses actually do match. They're gray. <laughs> nah, these were hey, you did pretty good there, Kilroy. <laughs> Sorry, my glasses are meant to match other characters. It matches your undershirt. That's fair. Mongo, you're the only one slacking. Yeah, I dropped the ball here. It's okay. We still love you. Thank you. All right. This uh, on notice. Do we now? How do we want to do this? Do we want to end on Tommy's team, or do we yes. want to just rip the bandaid off? No, let's, let's end, end on, on Tommy's that. team now. Let's end on Tommy's team so Tommy knows how long he has to talk about Tommy's team. <laughs> All right. Let's start then from the top. Ah, you see what he did there? Ah, set him up, knock him down. Nice get right. Boom. <laughs> All right, so kicking things off, I have a very, very top, uh, close top three. (laughs) Okay. Actually, arguably a top four, but not in a good way. Okay, that's closer, closer. All right, you made it sound powerful. (laughs) No, I have Memphis winning the division with a measly 44 and 38 record. Oh, man. I, I... Honestly, I don't – would you like me to tell you how far away I am from you on Memphis or which 44-win team I have accidentally winning this disaster? <laughs> wow. Let's start with where you have – what you have record for Memphis. Okay. So I am officially out on, on Memphis here as a whole. Um, Dylan Brooks leaves, which is good for morale, to be honest, but bad for defense. Desmond Bain gets paid, so assume him and Dylan Brooks on his new team are going to be at least a little bit fatter now that they've gotten their their first big boy contract. Uh, You bring in Derek Rose to try and be the mentor to John Morant, who, Killer, I think it was one of you, I think, sent me the quote, where basically he said, you know, I'm not here to babysit. I'm here to teach John Morant to play my style of basketball. Was that you, Kevin? Which, Which I read as... John Morant is going to have no knees by the time he's 27. Why you would want Derek Rose training you on his style of basketball, unless you oh, plan on no. winning a championship <laughs> immediately, be is beyond me. And on top of that, Jaws suspended. So, uh, you know, it's, games. It's, a, it's a team that I think got weaker. It's a team that has an obvious flaw for the first 25 games. Namely, it's missing its star. Um, and I have them at 36 and 43 um, missing the playoffs. Now, so let's, let's also not forget. Oh, sorry, 36 and 46. Sorry. Good math, Kevin. Good catch. I'm looking at two teams at once here. Go on, Gilbert. Let's also not forget Triple J did so poorly for Team USA. 
the guy forgot how to rebound for a seven footer who's supposed to be a defensive who's, who's a defensive player of the year candidate and didn't he win it how do you not rebound that's fair especially against the european bigs who are, who are traditionally supposed to be softer Although I th- I still feel like ever since that one year where we didn't win Olympic gold and the bigs came back and made it sound like they'd been through a haunted house with how, how scary it is to understand the FIBA rules, I feel like our bigs have been playing more timid internationally. And I'm not, I'm, I'm not giving Triple J an excuse because it was bad. It was real bad. But at the same time, I'd almost rather have Triple J come back looking bad then some of these guys go over there and just completely exhaust themselves and then they're left having the whole season catching up so i i agree that there's that that just adds to to sort of my narrative which is there's really no reason to believe in this memphis team but at the same time that's when memphis has tended to play at its best i mean memphis likes being the we have nothing to lose team and so maybe that works in their favor but usually that's jaw on the court being the catalyst, which he can't be here. And this team has rallied behind jaw injuries before, but it's a little bit different when, hey, we got your back, buddy, because something bad happened versus you were a moron and went to a club and did something you weren't supposed to. Now we're supposed to cover your back. It's you, it's a totally it's different scenario, and we can't promise that the team will cover him again. Especially even with the addition of Marcus Smart, it's not like Marcus Smart is offensively the same as Ja. Right, not even close. So, you're, you know, you're losing a lot of your offense. You're hoping that Triple J steps up. You're hoping that Steven Adams <laughs> steps up. Who we've learned he anything tried. will just be himself and does not care about the rest of the team. Um, I don't know. I, I, I'm giving them 44 because I feel that this, of the teams, they are the, they are the most clubs. consistent. Right, like they they are in it day in day out the same consistent team. Once Jaw comes back, this team will will start playing well again. Most likely, I do feel that they are going to struggle early because of the lack of Jaw, which is why I only gave them forty four wins and didn't give them higher. Um, I'm the only team I have that I could see surpass really surpassing them is the Pelicans, and but that would involve the Pelicans actually, you know playing and not being hurt. <laughs> they have a lot of issues with injuries and not just Zion. Zion isn't the only one who's been having injury problems on this team. Uh, I know he gets the most publicity for it because he was a former over, uh, number one overall pick and who barely has played since then. Um, and then he had that whole, this crazy off season himself that didn't quite rival Jaws, but it was in the same, it was in similar, uh, uh, not similar, but it was, it was definitely pretty, pretty bad, uh, but not, not as bad, but a different type of bad. Not the attention that the, the the his team wants, basically. Right. So Tommy and uh, Kevin, who do you? Uh, we'll start with uh, Kevin, and then we'll go to Tommy. Who? Do, what do you have Memphis going? Okay. So just as a reminder, uh, Memphis went fifty-one and thirty-one last year. Now, while I do have Memphis starting out ten and fifteen in the games, uh, John Morant is suspended. He remember he suspended the first twenty-five games, and I have them starting out ten and fifteen. I still have them reaching 46 and 36. And uh, that's very close yeah. to what I have. Uh, that It's still a five game drop off from last year. Uh, I just couldn't, I just couldn't see, I just couldn't drop them any more from last year because I do think they'll make up some of the difference from their 10 and 15 start, but not enough to reach 51 wins from last year. Mm-hmm. No, I agree. I, I, th- I do. I think that this, record would be totally different if Jaw was not suspended the first 25 games. Um, Tommy? Um, I trend more towards Mongo here. I have them at 37 and 45. Uh, it's not only the fact that Jaw suspended the first 20, like 25 games, it's the fact that the West is just getting better, like we've talked about. Yeah. I actually have them second to last in the division. <laughs> I mean, this division is 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 not great. Like I was like I was saying, my t- my top three are all neck and neck, and none of them are particularly great record wise. Obviously, jo- I mean, I had Memphis at number one at forty four wins. My number two, like I was saying, is the Pelicans. I have them at forty three wins. Um, I think this team has the best chance at winning this division, 
as long as everyone stays healthy or plays at least enough games. Um, Zion, they need him to play at least 50 games this year. Um, you know, uh, uh, oh my God, I'm blanking on his name. Um, they're the guy, that, the other guy that got from the Lakers. Uh, Brandon Ingram. Ingram. He has to hopefully, he'll hopefully stay healthy this year too. Uh, CJ McCollum, he'll be there for, you know, will help a lot as well. This team has a lot of talent. They just need to stay healthy and stay on the court. That's been their, that's been an issue for them the past couple of years. Uh, last year was definitely bad. Um, Kilroy, here, here's how I know you don't believe in Memphis. The conversation was, where do you have Memphis? And you've literally turned it back to the Pelicans every single time somebody is having no like, I have all, no interest in talking about that team. Let's talk about the team I actually care about. We all talked before about we, it. Before we actually get to the Pelicans <laughs> here, though, I do want to go off something Kevin said real quick. Kevin, I don't know if you, you did the math on yours, but your post-jaw return record would be the equivalent of almost exactly a 50 to 51 game season. And so kind of manipulating your numbers, the suggestion there is that when Ja gets back, they are the exact same team in terms of talent that they were last year. Now you can certainly buy into that. Uh, me and Tommy tend to not, Kevin tends to do, tends to, but what's important is that they have said Ja will be allowed to travel and practice with the team, which first of all makes this whole suspension kind of nonsense because what yeah. is it really doing other than letting Ja stay fresh? But to Kevin's number, even though I, I am with Tommy, I think the West improving, I also think it's much harder to play at the same level of energy when you're starting negative five games in, you know, basically – you know, Kevin's math checks out, but math can't account for the fact that if you're starting the season basically five games under 500 automatically, because I agree, Kevin, that 10 and 15 is a very reasonable number. Are you in the same spot mentally? And it, it is fortunate that they got rid of Dylan Brooks, who we know mentally is not the strongest, but we also know Ja is not necessarily the strongest. We know Steven Adams basically can't control this team. Derek Rose may be a shelved, forgotten old man 25 games in. You know, he's supposed to be adding some leadership. Marcus Smart, Smart can certainly run his mouth where it doesn't belong. You know, there's there's no reason to necessarily believe this team can, you know, mentally handle a slow start, even though anyone on the face of the earth can see that it should be pretty obvious. That the only crazy. reason, the other reason that I gave them 46 wins was somebody had to reach 40 in in this division, and I was like, okay, why the heck, why the heck not? That, I, that's I will say, yeah, that's that. that. That Mark, you are correct about the Marcus Smart thing because he, he did, he was part of, it was some of the problems early on with Boston when they were were struggling, um, not necessarily the past few years, but when he first was with Boston, he did, you know, when the team was not the greatest, he he was not helpful and he was not the greatest in the locker room. He seemed to have gotten better, so hopefully that maturity stays with him. But he has had issues in the past. So back to it seems Laura, would like you like to talk about the Pelicans? This time around, though. Yeah, let's go back to the Pelicans. Um, <laughs> Zion apparently was very close to being a Nick this offseason. Thankfully, he didn't come to the Knicks. He still has a chance this upcoming offseason, though. God, no, please. So you're no. saying there's a chance. Let's go. I hope it happens I'm... just for Kevin's reaction. Actually, to be honest, maybe he gets traded midseason to the Knicks. Who knows? <laughs> Oh, please um, let it happen. Please let it happen. Kevin will retire Nick, his Knicks, Knicks fandom, and he will become a Reggie Miller fan. No, that won't happen. <laughs> All if, right. if he becomes a Nick, then you guys better buy him a Zion jersey. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, I definitely do feel, though, that the Pelicans, when healthy, are the best team in this division. That's why I have them only one game back, because... I'm not. We, we don't know how many games Zion's going to play. We don't know how many games that Brandon Ingram's going to play. And quite frankly, CJ McCollum is not getting any younger. So how many games is he going to play? Um, the team has the talent. I think even with Jaw healthy, I just don't trust the rest of Memphis's talent. Or sorry, not healthy. Jaw playing a full season. I think that New Orleans has more talent as a whole team than memphis does and maybe i'm wrong but that's just my personal opinion about it um i i've i've been high on this pelicans team for a few years now last year as well and 
I, I again, because of I'm worried about injuries, I'm giving them one less win than I'm giving the Grizzlies. What do you guys have? I'll, t- I'll tell you, the, the Maverick hate in this chat right now is is palpable um, because I agree with everything Kilroy just said other than the fact that I have the Mavericks ahead of both these teams. Um, I don't believe in the Pelicans at all. I don't believe Zion's going to stay healthy, and if he doesn't, you're basically looking at the exact same team as last year. They, you know, EJ Liddell, their second rounder from two years ago, comes back from injury. Okay, cool. Uh, Cody Zeller joins the team in the oblig- obligatory someone needs a Zeller Bowl. Um, and Herb Jones gets paid. And again, like I said, with Desmond Bain, he's a defensive guy. He's paid now. Is he going to lose a step? Is he going to get fat? We don't know. Um, so I move them just slightly from where they were last year. I have them going 40 and 42. Um, I think they're right around 500. Again, it's, it's, I, I have them ahead of Memphis for what it's worth. Um, I know you said you put Memphis ahead of them. I do put them ahead of Memphis. Um, I think, um, you know, I think it's easier to bank on somebody on, on the Pelicans staying healthier than it is Ja coming back mentally 100% checked in, uh, just given the histories. But I'm not terribly high on either of these teams, 40 and 42. That's fair. Tommy, what do you got? What do you got in New Orleans? I've got him uh, 43 wins, 39 losses. I've got him second in the division. Um, I think, I, again, like you, Kilroy, I'm pretty high on them. But, uh, again, injuries are going to be a factor here. It certainly is. Kevin? Okay, so just so everyone knows, New Orleans was 42 and 40 last year. Um, I just have no faith in Zion, and I have no faith in this team staying healthy. I put them at 37 wins for this upcoming season. Again, none of them are really particularly far apart from each other, right? No one has said something where it's like been, wow, that is so many games behind the other. I'll also, I agree with that, and I'll also go as far as to say, in defense of your numbers, Kilroy, being a little bit higher than the rest of ours, um, I have overall the Pelicans finishing 10th in the West, Memphis finishing 11th, and if either of those teams sneaks into the 10, I think they're one of the toughest 10 outs hmm. ever. I mean, I would probably take them over, you know, regardless of, remember, the whole game here is wins, losses. It has nothing, it, these aren't power rankings. I feel like right. I say this every offseason. These are not power rankings. So one of these teams could easily slip into the playoffs just as they're either, you know, just as they're hitting their stride, you know, for for Memphis, they'll be hitting the playoffs basically for Jaws 55th, you know, through 60th game. And the Pelicans, who knows, that might be right as they're getting healthy. You never know. So if these teams, if one of these teams is 10, if these, honestly, this could be the 9-10 matchup with, which my goodness, I mean, that's a, that's a crazy little cold war there. Um, but I don't think either of these teams are necessarily, I'd have both these teams higher in the power rankings than I do in the standings. I'll say that. That's um, all right. You ready to move on to the next team? Other than Tommy, this almost has to be Dallas for all of you. I have Houston. Oh my God. I have Houston going 41 and 41. Um, this team to uh, this team, even with the Jalen, Jalen Green, right? Jalen Green is the one who's having the issues. I think that this team just has gotten better. I think that this team is is definitely going in the right direction. And at some point, they have to take that step. We've talked about this. They have to take that step. I think getting to 500 is reasonable. This division is just really bad. They're going to get easy wins from their own division. You sure about that? Kevin, can you... Kevin, that can you Google what was the last time man. a team made a 19 win jump in a season? Uh, by the way, just so everyone knows, while I look this up, the Houston Rockets last year were 22 and 22 16. wins. That's why I said 19. I can. Well, no, no, no. Well, I, I just want to make sure the audience knows that uh, okay our, that. our eyebrows were rising. Nine. So I'll, I'll be honest. I I will. Well, he's doing. Look at that. me and say that again. <laughs> <laughs> the Houston Rockets, I have going 41 and 41. And this, this was my final podcast. Goodbye. <laughs> Tommy walked off. Tommy went straight Tiki Barber, <laughs> and Joe Beningo <laughs> scared him away for life. Hey, um, right, you know what? You guys can hate all you want. I actually I'm stand behind you, especially seeing I, – I have I have, I have very, very harsh words for that, that Dallas team when we do talk about them. So then let me let me take my 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 aim here. Kilroy, here's where I agree with you. This team loaded to the brim with lottery picks that need to make a move at some point. I agree with you. 
would need to make a jump. And I, I think they will. The problem is they are going to hinder that jump by who they brought in. And I have I have been the first to admit this was a very low year for signings. And so I generally have just been rewarding quantity when it comes, not re-signings, but signings. I've just been rewarding quantity. But when you take a look at this group, they bring in Fred Van Fleet, who was the floor general. You know, honestly, the only reason that Toronto was not considered the biggest disappointment of all last year was because somehow the media created a narrative that that was to be expected. But that was a team with Van Fleet, Trent, Ananubi, uh, Siakam. They traded for Poto. That was a strong five that should have been way better than they were. And they were just bad. And now they're bringing a bad floor general of a bad team in to try and write another team that looks deep on paper. I don't buy that for a second. You bring in Dylan Brooks, who not only do we know can be an absolute locker room nonsense, but he also is this, you know, sub generations Draymond Green. He pisses off everyone. He brings out the best in everyone. You don't think LeBron's looking forward to try and drop 50 on him? You don't think everyone's coming for him? You go out and you give a four-year deal to Jock Landale, who here's a fun fact about Jock Landale. I like the kid. There was a time last summer where he was on three different teams in an eight-day span. So I don't care what you think about Jock Landale. The dude clearly is not the hottest commodity on earth. And then you got Aaron Holiday, who's basically just the second iteration of every team needs a zeller. Okay, boom, they got a holiday. So you've got these four guys who are going to diminish those jumps the rookies can make while also not necessarily being the the true veterans you want them to be. They all have their huge flaws. So now you have this big mess. I Listen, I like their coach. If anyone's going to be able to figure it out, it's going to be him. But I would have almost rather have just seen them let those young guys continue to flourish. Because, Kilroy, I agree with your initial statement. They The the young guys are there, especially you got one of the Thompson twins. You, you know, Green's got his issues. But talent-wise, it was coming along. Jabari Smith played his butt off in summer. I like the youth they have. They just now have too much, and I think it's going to be a year kind of like the Pistons last year where it's just a mess of what is this team. Well, we shall see. What did, is what did your you, Kings? Sorry, what did you say their record was? Now, with all that being said, I did give them a sizable jump because that is talent. It's talent with question marks, but it is talent. So I put them at 34 and 48, and um, I'll, I'll explain that 34 a little bit later on. But I do think it's sizable. I do think they're better, but – Man, a, a jump from being one of the worst teams in the league to being uh, a 500 team is is that's that's substantial. That's a big jump. Huh. Those are definitely his Sacramento Kings this year, Tommy. In case you missed <laughs> it, last year, Tommy Tommy whoa, correctly whoa, whoa, was able to identify the, the emergence of the Sacramento Kings. What I did last year with Detroit, I had them going around 500 last year, and then they just totally fell off because of a big injury, and then just that team was just so before. Alternatively, is, is this a okay with the fact that the Houston Rockets will underperform from this record that I projected? However, I just want to at least feel that I think I first off, I think 41 wins is much more reasonable for the Houston Rockets than whatever Tommy said from Sacramento Kings last year. Which is, which is ironic because he actually, I think, ended up under. I think what made it hysterical is because Tommy even thought Sacramento could be tolerable, we made fun of him. And then when we looked back, he was only a few games ahead of us. He just spoke the loudest. He was just the squeakiest wheel about the Kings. But we all had him about the same, and we were all still under. Like, it, like it wasn't <laughs> like Tommy was like, they're going 70 and 12. You know, he they're went going to the finals. 32. We had him at 37, and then they won 50 games or whatever. Like, you know, but uh, but this one, I, and I'll, I'll tell you, from, from knowing the general over-unders, from just reading, that's a high number fairly nationally killer. I mean, that's, that's a substantial, and I, listen, I'm not, I'm not criticizing. I love it. Go for it. You know, this is right up there with uh, that time that Kevin was wrong about his Knicks number by Christmas, because they would have had to have gone something like 63 and negative 18 in their, <laughs> in, their, in their last 45 games to hit Kevin's number. So, uh, so listen, we've, we've done weirder on this show, but uh, that's, that's a, that's bold. That's a bold, bold prediction for a team with a lot of things that need to go right for it to happen. I'm comfortable with it, um, mostly. But I do expect it to actually be less than 41 wins. But my my ceiling for them is 41 wins this year. I don't think they'll exceed 41. I really that's, don't. Well, that's spoiler fair. alert, my Spurs take isn't that ridiculous. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> when the that's Homer true. says, I'm not the lunatic on the show, you know. Actually, you know, <laughs> 
Kevin, what's your Rockets take? My Rockets take. Well, let's see. Um, I have them going uh, 31 and 51. Uh, this is a nine game improvement from last year. I do believe there's going to be, I do believe they're going to win more games than last year, but I don't believe they're going to stack up all the easy wins in this division like Kilroy thinks. This division's and, bad. Um, the only reason this number is different from when I told them about a month ago is because uh, I like, I think, uh, let's see, six weeks ago, whenever it was, I had them at 32 wins. I made a one game adjustment for uh, just because for recent news, I made I had to make an adjustment in the next division. I was like, one of these teams will lose will lose an extra game, and I just picked the Rockets just for kicks. But Fair other enough. than that, I do believe they'll win more games than last year. I do believe there's something going on on this team, just not enough to uh, just not enough to sniff a playoff spot. Tommy, I want to preface this. I do do th- agree with you guys that things are going on with this team and I like the trajectory. I just don't buy it yet. With that in mind, I, I gave them 27 wins and 55 losses. I just, I don't buy it yet. They're getting there. I just, I, it's not going to be overnight. Okay. That's, that's um, okay. I'm more than happy to be wrong. I really am. So you're saying it's six, six game, right? That was, that's what that is. Six game improvement. Yes. Okay. I mean, that's reasonable. 19 is a lot. I am, I am not, uh, I I'm fully aware of that. Uh, I just I don't know. Mago and I were talking so highly of them at the end of, at, 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 in the beginning of the summer before things got crazy that I ran with it and made me feel. Com- I'm I'm not I'm not backing down, but it did. We're, that we're was part only of it. partially judging you. We were we were especially after that draft and everything. I felt pretty good and comfortable with them. Now I have the Dallas Mavericks. I have them going 39 and 43. Really, all four of those teams are really close. They're all within five games of each other. I do not at all like what Dallas did in this offseason. I feel that this team got significantly worse. Um, you know, you have the same issues with Kyrie dealing with Kyrie, where you know he seems happy, but he's he has seemed happy before, right? And then I don't think this is going to be like the Golden State Warriors, Kevin. <laughs> um, but. Um, oh, no, I'm answering your question about the last time a team made a big jump from one season to the next. It was 2020, 2021. Golden State Warriors had 15 wins and then jumped to 39 wins. But that so, was with, with health, right? Right. The players yeah. not healthy but and stuff. I'm, That's totally different. You asked, you asked the question about when was the last me, time. Yeah. A team made a 19 or similar big game jump, uh, and that's what I came up right. with. Right, but totally Miami. different reasons. Yeah. And right, and so I'm, I'm weren't bad because of injury. Yeah, right. I'm looking. I'm looking at the list of like top ones of all time. The biggest one was like 40 wins, and there are a bunch in the 30s. 42. But it was like it was like when Tim Duncan got drafted. It was when Boston went all in with its big three in 07. Yep. That was the one. Was, 42 wins. You know, it's these these. Usually there is a a legendary player who either comes in or returns from injury <laughs> to get you to a substantial you know twenty or more win yeah. jump. This this big this big name was Fred Van Fleet. So yeah, you know everyone loves, we'll, we'll loves see what Freddy. happens there. Freddie Fleetfoot, um, that's what they call him, right? Freddie Fleetfoot. Sure, why not? All right, get back on the Dallas train because I want to give I want to give Tommy time to flex on everybody, and uh, we're we're running low here. Let's let's roll. Sure. Uh, but I absolutely hated the moves that Dallas did. They got worse at almost every position except, obviously, with Luka and Kyrie, uh, you know, their push. I don't think Grant Williams is at all a starting level player. He is expected to be their starting small forward. Um, they're starting two rookies at the bigs. I think that that's, that's going to be detrimental to this team. I, I, not that those guys don't have talent and can be good in the future. But for a team that's trying to make a push, a playoff push, starting two rookies as your as your bigs is not going to be good. What? I just want to make sure we all heard it. Kilroy said that they downgraded at every position except those guards. You guys all made fun of me when I said Dwight Powell was the Iron Man of the NBA, and now he's going to get replaced by somebody else. And you're telling me it can humanly be a downgrade. Dwight Powell is on, baby. 
<laughs> you all fall for my trap a year and a half later. Dwight Powell's the man. You heard it from you from four I second. You got me. Dwight Powell's the best center the Mavericks have had in the past five years. Yes. All right. That's all I need. That's listen, I don't care what happens with the rest of this division. That's the only victory I needed right there. Sorry, um, please continue. But yeah, no, I feel that this team has gotten so much worse again. And you don't know what's happening with Kyrie, right? Like at any moment, he could just quit on this team. He's done it before. He loved it when he first went to Boston. And then he quit on them. He loved it when he was in, when he went, where did he go after Boston? The Nets. He he wanted to go to the Nets and then he quit on them. And you don't and know what you're Cleveland getting. Too, well, I, guess he, I guess he didn't quit on the Nets. The Nets kind of just said, you're not allowed to play because... The NBA says so, and then he he was a baby about it, um, and then he said some did some anti-Semitic stuff, and then they didn't. The next really, he did that entirely him. to himself. Um, he didn't really quit on the team. He was just a bad person. He was a bad. It, he seemed like a bad. He made himself seem like a bad person. I I don't know. I, but anyway, he is a is, bad person. Honestly, I you don't know what you're getting from Kyrie. Luca is going to be good, but he 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 has no one around him outside of Luca, right? Like, and if Luca, is, I'm sorry, outside of Kyrie, and if Kyrie just doesn't want to play, how is this team going to win? They don't have that, you know. Like, they they they're trying to go back to the, the similar mold that they had with Jalen Brunson was there by having Kyrie be his running mate, um, and obviously, talent wise, when he plays, Kyrie. No one's questioning, right? And maybe Kevin. Kyrie's better than Jalen Brunson, right? We can all say that. I would say that. When but the court, issue yeah. is Kyrie doesn't like to play it's, basketball it, always. There's an argument to be made, but I'll buy it. Right. Who, like who am I drafting today versus who is better on a basketball court are two different questions, right. which I think is what Kilroy's saying. Who's just better in a vacuum? Yeah, I'll, I'll give you Kyrie. Yeah. So, you know, I, I – I get what they, they, they but and then they just invested so much money into him. I don't know, and this team just doesn't have, doesn't seem to, it doesn't seem to be uh, any way for this team to get better anytime soon. They don't have tradable draft assets. They don't have, sorry, tradable assets really. They lost. They moved, moved Christoph Porzingis last off, it was last trade deadline, and then what they got in return was is just they got one guy left, right? I think everything else is gone from that trade. Uh, yeah, I think so. <laughs> that was a terrible trade. <laughs> and, and trading for Christoph Porzingis was terrible for them. Uh, moving on. Everything involving that, that completely uh, – like, like, that completely I, cool. don't, I don't feel conf- confident in this team, and I, I expect to hear in the next year or so, Luca's demanding a trade out. So here's the, here's the thing. This team, to me, has shades of the 2000-2001 Nets. Where listen, I I like Kenyon Martin, I like Richard Jefferson, I think Kerry Kittles might be the best example. None of those guys were terribly great players. Kerry Kittles was literally barely in anyone on either side of his tenure with Jason Kidd, but they put together guys who were compatible with Jason Kidd's unique style of play. And I think that's what you're seeing here. I mean, we know that if you were to make a definitive list of the 75 players in this division. It goes number one, Luca. Number two, the other seventy-four guys. I mean, Luca's in a in a <laughs> class by him by his absolute self, and you're surrounding him. This you know, this Olivier Prosper, this this rookie four who's coming out of nowhere here. You know, he's supposed to be a a three and D style running gun style, going to be good on the pick and roll style guy. Um, you know, Derek Lively looks like he can do some pick and pop with Doncic as well. Even if Irving quits on the team, Seth Curry is a a great sixth man option who can you know be on the right side of receiving, you know, you know, being ready to catch and shoot that three. Tim Hardaway Jr. as well. Dwight Powell gives them some depth off the bench. You know, they just went out and they got, kind of sneaking in there, you know, they just, even, you know, Maxi Kleiber knows how to play with Doncic if his number ever gets called off the bench because he started a ton of games last year. So this team is is very conducively built, you know, for Luka. And, uh, you know, I think if Luka doesn't like this squad, They'll just go out and move more pieces. I, I don't think this was about long term health. I think that's yeah, and and that's and that's 
that's okay. I mean, friendly reminder that guys like Luke Longley and Bill Wennington and Ron Harper, you know, Steve Kerr, all have three or more as a player championship rings because they were guys that made sense around Jordan. And I'm not saying this is a championship team by any means, but I'm saying when you look at some of the some of the teams that have won championships or even some of the teams that have gone far, some of LeBron's teams, some of Jordan's teams, they're they're not necessarily loaded with absolute talent. Now, this generation, of course, had LeBron's big threes, but there have been some surround a star with what works for them success stories. And it doesn't have to be, again, it doesn't have to be champions. Um, you know, it, it's a lot of teams have done that model. Now, with all that being said, I don't think they're a great team. I have them at 45 and 37, but I do have them as, as good enough and deep enough to win the division. Now, the one caveat I'll give you completely is if you believe Dallas is too stupid to finally recognize, oh, look at that. We actually have a true center. Let's start them. And you believe Dwight Powell is going to end up starting 50 or more games at center this year. Then, yeah, I drop them down to like 41 and 41. I think that they're a team that's just going to get run over, especially now that basically every other team in the division has an actual center. But I'm assuming by Christmas, Derek Lively is universally the absolute be all end all starter of this team. And uh, I, I like I like that they are finally a more diverse starting five. Jason Kidd did come out and say that those two rookies are starting. Well, they're starting in the preseason and we'll see what happens. Right which is a little bit different. Also, a rookie can start and struggle and get benched. I There's a definite point. You know, basically, Jalen Brunson, that, Jalen Brunson could have three assists and 15 turnovers the first 10 games of the season. He's still starting game 11. You know, that's the level of confidence I'm talking right. about. I want to get to a point where you can just chalk in Derek Lively as the center, not Derek Lively has to watch out for Dwight Powell over his shoulder because you can't even thing. see Dwight know. Powell over his shoulder. And I'm just not confident in Jason Kidd as a head coach. That's that's fair, and that that's reasonable as well. But I, I do think because Doncic is kind of being built in the ilk of Jason Kidd here in terms of what kind of leader he's expected to be. Listen, it's you and 11 guys, or I guess technically now 13, 14 guys who are built to be your running buddies. You know, I, I think if anyone knows how to play that kind of team, it's Jason Kidd. It's what he had for the Nets for a couple of years before, you know, Vince Carter got there. All right. Tommy, what do you have, Bob? Uh, Dallas. I have them at 46 and 36. Um, I, I admit I'm probably being a little generous, but I, I think they are the best team, at least in the division. They have the best player in the division. Like okay. Yes, I fair enough. That's kind of what player. I was alluding to, yeah. Kevin? Uh, yeah, I have them at 39 and 43. I am not assigning any team with Mr. AWOL. Uh, a record at 500 or above because I believe that there's going to be some unknown stupid thing that will cause him to miss games somewhere in some shape or form, either his own stupidity or something else. And just for the record, I am surpri- I was surprised when I was doing this to find out that they had only won 38 games last year. Uh, so I was surprised to see that I had given them one game more than last year, but I don't have them anywhere over 500. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I'll say also, this. I'll say this. Sorry, real quick. When you're talking about best teams, even if Kyrie Irving just retired tomorrow and, you know, THJ had to be the, the emergency starter on this team, I mean, you're still looking at a bench that somewhere up and down that bench has Josh Green, has Rashawn Holmes, has Dwight Powell, has Maxi Kleiber, has Seth Curry, has Jaden Hardy. This is an incredibly we, – we think of it – as just a one-man army, because in terms of star power, it is. But when you finally start actually counting the NBA competent bodies on this team, it's an incredibly deep team that it wasn't a few years ago. I will also say this. Lucas still does have a conditioning issue. They have to – that that also needs to be uh, – uh, is a concern as well. I thought I thought Luca has more of an injury issue from overuse, like where like where he, he has more potential to get – injured from being overused too much well it's been up until this season it's been because of conditioning he's been coming in out of shape this year's a little bit different because he played in the uh the olympic preliminaries um but for the most part it's been because he's coming in out of shape and having and he plays in season to he get has back to play into himself shape. into shape right which you know the the coaching staff has not been happy about um but you know, that is, that's going to help, you know, start them off slow. That's what, what 
part of been Dallas's problems the past few years. They've been starting slow because of him not coming in in shape. But that's not as big an issue this year because he's played in these preliminary uh, Olympic of uh, Olympic uh, preliminaries. Though I don't even know if he played. He was supposed to play and then he got hurt. Uh, so who knows? He could just be. You know, he, I, he did something to his knee. Uh, I don't know how, how extended that injury is, but by the way, I know I know this is semantic, and I, I promise I'll stop talking. Literally, when we do the Spurs, I'm just going to give a number and then let Tommy have the floor. But when you're talking about one game, like Kevin just did, please remember that literally the the, the Mavericks punted the final two games of the season last year yeah. because they wanted to get back in the lottery. So, assuming that they actually cared, you may have actually taken them back one game. We we're not fully sure, um, but but that that was really a 38 dash 40 ish win team last year uh because they they quite definitively punted those last two games now here comes my biggest drop off i have the spurs at 29 wins um i think that victor womanyaba is going to take time to develop into an nba player uh i am not as sold as i mean we were we were all pretty you know except tommy we're pretty soured on him not soured but we're like we're harsher on him than everyone else was um, once draft came along, I think he has a lot of talent. I don't necessarily think he's this, ge- he's going to be this huge generational talent that everyone thinks he's going to be. I think he's going to be very good. I think he's, he's, he has a chance to be another very good, talented big, but the, anointing him a Hall of Fame already seems, um, seems ridiculous. Sure. At, at I agree. Right. Um, especially seeing he, you know the, the the it's weird like the big his big selling point or one of his big selling points was that he's supposed to be a really good three point shooter and then you look at his career three point shooting percentage it's something like 20% which is like that's like for an nba big that's te- that's not even good right like i understand he's 7 foot 3 7 3 7 4 something like that but he's like we ha- we have that already we had Kristaps Porzingis right and he's still in this league, Chris Stops, and he's not even 30 yet. And he's, he's, I mean, injuries was his issue, but assuming that Victor Wamanyama is able to stay healthy, is him being just a Christoph Porzingis? Is that, is that what the Spurs are hoping for at worst? Now, you say the word just there, but you have to remember it's a Christoph Porzingis that gets to go to a competent coach and right, doesn't right. have to get broken by the New York media. Because that was really Kristaps' biggest problem. That within about a week, it was clear that his head was not ready for this city. So getting getting to a better place uh, may help. I'm going to just piggyback off of what Corey said real quick and say, Spurs fans, the one thing you really want to make sure, aside from just putting him in the hall prematurely, please don't look at his initial rookie campaign next to Duncan and, and Robinson. I, I I know most of you know this already. I know you three know, but. Tim Duncan had David Robinson coming back from injury his rookie season. David Robinson doesn't actually play his rookie season until his mid-20s because of his commitments to the Navy. So these guys were in much better positions, Robinson being much more mature, Duncan having a better team, to come in and make those sizable jumps. So if you're sitting there going, oh, third, first overall big for the Spurs, third time we immediately jump into relevance, that's that's not going to happen. Now, with that being said, I like this Spurs team. I even liked it last year, even when they didn't have the number one overall pick. Um, I'm a little higher. I put them at 33 and 49. Um, I literally, so going back to what I said before, I actually wanted to put Houston at 33 wins too. I just hate tiebreakers because Kevin makes me do them. So I gave Houston one more win, putting San Antonio in last. But I think San Antonio and Houston are – generally at the same level, young teams up and coming, low 30s win, low to mid 30s win total. Uh, Give me the Spurs for 33 and 49. Kevin? All right. Um, Just so you guys know, there was history of big 30 plus, as they mentioned, there was history of big 30 plus win improvements with Robinson and then Duncan. I do not see that with the Spurs. I I did, however... Uh, put them at 34 wins. I think there's going to be a big. I think there's going to be a pretty, pretty big improvement. I think 12 wins from 22 wins last year to 34, 12 win increase is still a pretty big improvement. Uh, there'll be some growing pains. I mean, you, I, you hope that Victor improves as the season goes on. You hope he bulks up a little bit because I sent Tommy a picture yesterday that uh, there's a certain point guard named Eric Bledsoe that outweighs your uh, starting 
forward slash yeah. center. No, I didn't know that. That's awesome. <laughs> so you might you That's might right. want to hope that Victor puts on at least five more pounds to make he, that. Not he true. already has. I believe he already but, has. Um, that, that I don't know when that I don't know when that measurement was taken and when uh, uh, Tommy uh, noticed the uh, updated measurement. But uh, I think Spurs fans, let's exercise some patience. Uh, anything positive. Hope he stays healthy. Anything positive is a good thing. And let's kick it upstairs to Tommy and see what uh, he says on his team. He has him going 72 and 0. No, no. That would be 82 and 0, first of all. And I don't think well, that's happening. Look, I agree with Kevin. I, you got it to be realistic here if you're a Spurs fan. Things aren't going to happen year one for, for Victor. That said, 82 and 0, baby. <laughs> <laughs> No, 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 no. Now, I do want to point out, the only thing you guys talked about this whole time you talked about the Spurs was Victor Wembanyama. When there are... For a reason. No. In fairness, no. I said I liked this team last year. I did say I was, I was high on this team last I year. I think you're being pretty unfair to this team, Michael. This is a team that was intentionally losing games last year. That, that There were games that they were up 30 points on these teams, and they intentionally lost. Devin Vassell, Jeremy Sohan... Calvin Johnson, they're only going to get better this year. Uh, I, you know, there are other players I can't really speak to. You know, I think there are players that should get traded before the season starts, like Doug McDermott, maybe even Devontae Graham. But I think this is a pretty solid team. And with that in mind, I'm I'm going to go a little higher than you guys. I'm going 38 and 44. You know, I res- I respect that number, and I'll I'll tell you why I don't go higher. Because I am hearing reports, and, and you, I'm sure you have a better Spurs beat, or I'm sure you have a, a hotter take than me, that I'm, I'm with you. Those three names you just said are the, are the special ones. But either Sohan or Keldon Johnson is going to be the sixth man on this team? I'm not sure what the, what's going on with all that. I even, I even heard the NBA had I, – I got an email from the NBA, you know, their automated emails. And the question on the email was, will Wembenyama be the point guard? <laughs> what kind of dumb take is that? I mean, point maybe, but not guard. But yeah, I mean, that that's the only, I, some of these teams, and this is what I was kind of alluding to with Houston before. This is what I alluded to about Detroit last year. Sometimes it's, it's more about these teams having to lose some games early on to figure it out. And, um, you know, again, it's the whole power rankings versus wins game thing where I, I, I'm with you. I like the talent on this team. Trust me, I, I'm trying to trade for so on in a dynasty league where I already have Keldon Johnson. I'm, I'm big on these guys. Um, right, so I get my league up soon. But uh, yeah, spoiler. Oh yeah, we gotta get that going again. Um, but uh, you daily this time. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, well, I'm done playing weekly, guys. Sorry, we're we're going we're we're sidebarring here. But anyway, the point is, I I like the talent. I just think until they figure out how to use it, um, and until they figure out exactly, you know, what is Wemby, you know, I think I think this may take a hot minute, and they'll yeah. lose a couple games early on. Um, the other thing, you know, again. The Spurs will be trying to win games, but so will everybody. You know, there is no incentive. Oh, that's one hundred percent true. Yeah, you be necessarily but, tanking this year. I'm gonna be honest. I think a lot of their losses are, like you said, gonna come early on. You know, mm-hmm. this is a team that needs to cook a little before they figure it out. They're yeah. gonna try some lineups. They're gonna see what works best. But I, by the end of the season, I think we're gonna this see division kind of like. If they're if they're like fifteen and twenty five though, and then they go into the rodeo road trip, you know that the season can get away from them. Real, oh yeah, real quick. I'm not gonna sit here and think. Uh, th- uh, this is me being generous. I, if I were to like really critique this team, I think I would lean more towards you guys. But I, I just knowing what I've watched, you know, going to games, watching them, I think there's more than meets the eye with this team. And I, I don't blame you, honestly. If you could you could certainly sell me on a world of thirty eight wins. Um, again, it, it's my job to try and run the you know the the situation a thousand times in my head and settle on a median number. But uh, but I, I I I see no reason for Spurs fans not to believe that being mathematically alive in the final two weeks of the season is is not real. I can I can buy Just, into that. Which Absolutely, is, by which no really means no more than forty, no more than thirty-eight. Though there's no way they win more than thirty-eight, in my opinion. But as long as if they're playing competitive basketball in April, if they're playing their best basketball in April, if they're mathematically alive in April, you you or I guess March technically, uh, you know, you you got to be happy with that. I actually have them making the play in, play in, but losing the play in. Nice. That would be that would be huge for this team. Huge for Houston. Yeah, yeah honestly, do. Yeah. Right. Enough said. Well, thank you all so much 
for watching, listening, and listening. Remember to comment down below who you have winning the division in your records for the teams. We'll catch you guys next time. See you. So I want to give a weird little shout out here. Uh, the the news is Aces Liberty WNBA Finals. Let's go. Spoiler alert: Aces took game one today. Do better, Liberty. Go Aces. But what I really want to give a shout out to Yahoo Sports. Good job getting some coverage on this. I know the WNBA is basically the uh, you know ugly stepchild of the uh, of the sports world, uh, but you're actually seeing some articles and you're seeing some narrative articles. You know, not just here's what happened, but you know. Can they do this? Will this happen? You know, that sort of thing. And so, um, you know, Yahoo generally, I'm picking on them today because they generally tend to miss the WNBA boat. Uh, but you're seeing right on the front page some stories. So shout out Yahoo. Nicely done. Liberty, get them in game two. Go Aces.